Okay, so let's get starting. Well, it's 7 p.m. in Tashkent. I'm really happy to hear you here again. So let's start the week four of our digital storytelling workshop. <clears throat> so this month's topic was called yeah. Color of the Rainbow. And last time, as you remember, we talked about the narrative writing process. So we divided into states and based on the states, we developed narrative. Some of you have shared your narratives in our groups and in our Facebook. I really liked uh, the style you used in your narratives. So based on the reviews, you have changed and improved your narratives. I'm sure that today all of you are participating in this workshop with a ready written narrative in hand, right? So let's move on to the next stage then. Today we are going to record the narrative as an audio format, and then we'll develop a storyboard. So from narrative, we will move on to the narration. So narration is a recorded form of a narrative. So as I told you that idea is the most important thing in digital storytelling. Once you have idea, once you have developed a concept of this idea, and once you have written your narrative based on this idea. Now it's time to record this narrative and make it a narration and then add images, videos, media files, and to develop a digital story based on your narrative. So the digital story and the all the processes following uh, today's workshop will work around the narrative. So narrative will be your central point. Once you have recorded it as, a, as an audio file, you will make sure that uh, your images and videos will be the same length as your audio format is. So let's get started. First of all, let me congratulate you to, okay. So let me congratulate you for reaching the week four. It's a really important stage in digital story development process. In week four, we will focus on how you can record audio narration. That will be the base of your digital story. We will examine some of the most common types of microphones and recording devices. And we will practice recording the script you wrote. We will also demonstrate how to record and edit your digital audio files using Audacity, pre-audio recording softwares or your phones. Well, if you prefer, you can have audio editing program in order to have a very high quality audio narration, but any device will work. Even simple phones will work really well for these purposes. The important thing to remember is that recording your voice is a key component of your digital story. Before starting the recording process, you really have to rehearse and practice, work on your intonation, your voice, and of course you have to pay attention which words you are stressing and which words you are eating out. So here, your narration explains the information you are presenting and provides a personal touch to your story. So that's why this process should not be overlooked. You should take as much time as needed to practice your narration. This week, we will explore how you can find and download appropriate background music for your narration, and also how to record and edit your audio narration. We will focus on music that is in the public domain or is free of copyright restrictions. As you remember, we have discussed copyright restrictions last time also. Most of the, as we will be working with media, we'll be working with images, videos, and audio files. You have to keep in mind that most of the files you can easily download on the internet are usually not free of copyright, which means if you use them without permission, you may, may be charged against with a claim that uh, you are using someone else's work. So that's why be very careful about that. Let's start. So this week's objectives are, this week we are going to do several things. 
as I told you, the main task we are supposed to achieve this week is to record the script that you have already written. So we will record, we will prepare it in audio format. In order to do this in the first place, we will prepare recording devices. Any recording device may work well. And then we will select an appropriate music for your digital story. It's of course optional. You can choose a silent background. So you will be speaking and the background voice will be silent. Or if you want to make your narration even um, more strong, then you can use um, background music, which will emphasize strong points and which will, which will give your story personal touch. And then we'll combine narration and music into a single audio file. And then we will save this combined audio file, share it in our Telegram group, discuss and peer review each other's works, give each other's works, comments and feedback. And then your audio file, once it has reached the final stage, once it's ready, next time we will be working on finding images, videos, and preparing our digital story. So when recording an audio narration, the most important thing you should have is a microphone. So without microphone, it's impossible to record a high quality narration because without microphone, all kinds of background noises you have will be included in your narration and it's, it, your voice will not be very clear. So I really recommend you to have a microphone. All kinds of microphones can work. Microphones starting from this, so simply headphone microphones or any kind of professional microphones, if you can afford, of course, will work best. So you have to, you have to be um, familiar with the type of microphones in the first place. So here I'm included I'm, I'm including some technical data on microphones. We have two types of microphones. These are dynamic microphones and condenser microphones. Dynamic microphone takes advantage of electromagnet effects, which means that uh, dynamic microphone uh, is operated with the help of a magnet or a coil when sound waves hit the diaphragm. And that's a really good one to have because your voice will be very clear and high quality one in this. Condenser microphones is essentially a capacity, uh, one plate of a capacitor moving in response to sound waves. And usually you need a small battery to operate this. This is more professional one for our purposes here. I think dynamic microphones will work. So in order to have a clear uh, image of what is this microphone and what we are talking about. Let's move on to the next slide. Here in these pictures, you can see the styles and types of the microphones. Take a look at them. So most of them are familiar to you. So you have seen or you have used at least one of them, I'm sure. So this microphone here is called handheld microphone. So this is the microphone you will be holding in your hand when speaking. So this microphone can be easily moved around. There are some authors who really prefer walking when recording narration. So sitting still is not the type of, um, type of uh, setting that they will comfortable in. That's why if you are that type of a narrator, if you would like to move around when you are recording your voice, I really recommend you to have a handheld microphone. Handheld microphones can also can be as small as this or really big ones, depending on the cost and the quality, of course. So the second type of microphone that you see right here is called lavalier microphones. And these are usually clipped on a speaker's clothing. If you have ever given interview uh, for a TV program, you have probably used this kind of a microphone. So these microphones may be wired, or sometimes nowadays they are mostly wireless, which means they don't have this kind of a wire. So you just simply put it under your um, clothing and it's not visible, but it will clearly catch your voice and 
record your voice. Unless you are not recording yourself in a video, it's not necessary to use lavalier microphones because for audio recording, it doesn't matter what kind of um, recording device you use because your video will not be recorded. You will be recording only your voice. And this kind of a microphone that you can see here is called a shotgun microphone. This type of microphones are often mounted on poles and pointed towards the speaker. So it will be basically standing on your table, looking at you and you will be recording your voice. So it's a really comfortable one. If you can, if you can afford, it's better to have this kind of a microphone on your desk so that your audio recording process will be easier. And then this type of a microphone, that one that you see here is called computer microphones. Are they, are, they are becoming very popular and sometimes they are sold in, uh, in one set with the computer. So you basically connect it to the, micro, to the computer with the help of this kind of wires and it will be working. And it records really high quality um, patterns of voice and it really works better and it's a little bit cheap in comparison to other types of microphones. So here is the summer, summary of everything we have discussed about microphones. Buy the one that you can afford. For me, this kind of microphones with earphones work better. You can hear my voice clearly, right? So when I'm recording an, an audio narration, they can record really high quality narration. There is less uh, noise in my narration. But if you have ever used professional microphones, um, such as this handheld microphones, they have even better quality. So get the one you afford, but get one because without microphone, you will not have a very high quality um, audio file for your narration. If you don't have any microphones for for the purposes of this workshop, you can use your phones. It can be your Android phones, or if you have a voice recording device, it's also okay. So anything you can find. Try to make the most of the devices you already have under your hand. I don't really expect you to buy all this um, technical items that uh, you need, but later when you will be using this um, digital storytelling in your classes, I really recommend you to ask your school or your sponsors to buy you devices that you need so that your digital stories will be of high quality and professional ones. Enough with microphones, I think. So the summary is you should have a microphone, right? Now, there are some good and best practices for making audio recordings. In the first place, if you are going to include someone else's interview or words, it's better to ask permission before recording someone. It's a really huge law issue now. Uh, it's, it's against law to record someone and to publish this recording without that person's consent. So be careful with that. And also it's a good practice to record at 44.1 KHZ. So what I'm saying may sound alien to you because uh, most of us teachers are not really into this kind of things. But when you are managing the settings of your computer audio, you will be given different bits. So try to choose the 16-bit format. This is CD standard. And it will have high quality um, if you choose this one. And when recording your narration, try to record it in MP3 format. You can choose and record in other formats too, but MP3 format is the basic one. And almost all software programs for video editing will, will accept this format. If you choose different formats, you may have uh, problems when uh, using them in certain video editing programs. So I really recommend you to choose the simple one, that's MP3 format. The next one is, Small recorders are available that are suitable for both informal and formal recording. So try to have a smaller recorder. 
You don't really have to have a home studio in order to create digital stories, but at least you should have the basic devices. And if you have an external cardioid condenser microphone, so handheld microphone or shotgun microphone, it's better. So the better the quality of a microphone is, better the quality of your sound will be in your narration. It's all up to you. And also, you have to uh, keep in mind what kind of images you are going to use later based on this audio. So take turns, stop when necessary, take breath or stress certain phrases if you want to. So you have to firstly make yourself ready for recording. You should know which part of the recording you will be reading in high pitch, which part of the narration will go in a low pitch and which phrases you will be stressing out. I really recommend you to underline them or to highlight them in different colors. So for example, when I have a ready narrative, what I do is I take a highlighter and I highlight all the uh, highly stressed phrases in red. Or when I need to stop, I put a green line across so that I know I have to stop here for two or three seconds. So make it ready and then start on the recording. Well, sometimes, not sometimes, but most of the times your digital story narration will be very effective if you choose a suitable background music. It should be soothing and calming music and its theme should match the theme that you are choosing for your digital story. But there is a problem with legal music these days. So YouTube can check and claim for copyright if your music or sounds you use are not um, free of copyright. So I'm going to present you some websites here. In this website, you can have um, much of the free, free of copyright music. So let's visit this website. It's called Digital Storytelling. Okay, Digital Storytelling Education Uses. This website is a really good one. I address to this website a lot when I am developing a digital story for my class. Okay, let me share this with you here. This website here, I will send a link to you on a private message. It will give you links to websites which contain free of copyright music sounds and background music. I really recommend you to choose music from these ones because when you choose any music from the internet, you can never be sure if it's free of the copyright or not free of the copyright. So just a second, I will be sharing this with you. Okay. Here it is. Now, we will continue with our slides. So, we have prepared our narrative. We have found and downloaded a really suitable background music that emphasizes strong points of our narrative. So we have everything in hand. Now we will move on to the next part. So in this next part, Okay, now it's time to actually start on this. So we have a microphone. We have a well-practiced script in our hand. What we do is we sit and then we read and practice this narrative. We highlight the points we need to stress out. We highlight the points where we should stop and etc. So you have a big picture in mind, but we will not just go and start recording just yet. You have to firstly create a storyboard before recording your voice because storyboard will give you important information about where to stop, where to stress, where to move on quickly and how to manage your digital story time. As I told you, it's better to have digital stories within the limit of two, three minutes. So you have to really make sure that 
your narrative takes no more or no less time. So storyboarding, what is a storyboard? Storyboarding refers to a way of planning all the things that appear in your digital story. That can be pictures, that can be words, narrative in our case, right? Photos, text, videos, and etc. Storyboard helps storytellers to picture this entire story from beginning till finish. Once you have this picture in mind, it will be really easy to move on to the next stages. Storyboards are created in the order of things that happen in the digital story. So you will create storyboard in the linear way. So you will start from the introduction and then you will move on to your story step by step. And it helps to show what things will appear in your story, uh, which text will go with, with which video, which picture meets, meets what phrases, and etc. They often inspire new ideas for organization or visual effects, show gaps, and help to improve video's quality. Think about the place where you will be filming or recording. And of course, be prepared for some challenges. You may have technical problems or suddenly you may have a background noise that you, you really don't want to include in your recording process. And of course, lighting is also important if you are recording a video of yourself. Sometimes in the digital stories, author also gives a speech. So some, some part of the, your narrative can be recorded with the help of a video of your own. So in this case, I really recommend you to get a lightning. Here I will show you one example. This type of lightning I use in my own Zoom session. So without the lightning, it will not be very clear, right? So with the lightning, your video and your image will be of high quality and everything will look nice. So I really recommend you to have at least a lamp or um, anything that can light your face up so that your uh, videos will be of high quality and flawless. Now, creating a storyboard can be as simple as sketching out your plans on a paper. As I told you earlier, well, you can be two type of people. You can be a traditional one who really wants to have all these things on a paper so some people really cannot imagine things if their fingers don't work. So if you are this type of person, you can just take papers. I really recommend you to have A4 papers, two, three, four, and then draw what will happen in your story. Of, or if you are a digitally literate teacher who really prefer technology to traditional pen and paper, then there are many software programs and many things uh, as simple as Microsoft Word till the software programs that we have used in uh, narrative creating last time, you can use them in order to prepare your storyboard. So here, this is a simple example of a storyboard made on a piece of paper. You can take a piece of paper and here you can start sketching your ideas. So your first shot, your first sentence maybe. Here you will write the phrases that will be accompanying your first picture or your first video. And then you will move on to the second one and etc. cetera. In, so that you will have a clear picture of the storyboard in mind, I will be sharing with you a storyboard examples. These are examples of storyboards made for professional digital stories. We have many examples, Run Your World, Chinatown, My Cultural Identity, and etc. So they address different topics. I will choose this one, My Cultural Identity One, because it is a little bit closely related to our topic. So let's take a look at the video. Last time when I showed you a video on Zoom session, I noticed that the voice was the voice was not audible to you. So please let me know if you can hear this video or not. So we'll be starting it right away. Okay. Can you see the video? 
Can you watch this video and can you hear it? No, we cannot. You cannot see the video, right? Yeah. Okay. No, we see the video, but maybe the voice yeah. is not. Yes. Okay, so... There isn't a voice. Okay, so let me... Let me switch on the computer. Video. Well, then I will be sharing it with you so that you will be watching it yourself. I will be showing you the storyboard in this case. Okay, uh -huh. the storyboard goes right here. So this is the example of the storyboard. Okay, just a moment here. My cultural identity. This digital story was developed by Elisa Willemzen. Can you see the storyboard? Yes, we can. Okay, good, thank you. So here, look at this. In the beginning, the author is giving a brief description of what digital story will include. My digital story is about how I shape my cultural identity. It starts in Kyrgyzstan, my country of birth, and describes my experiences when I first immigrated to the United States. I describe my first experiences at school and about learning English. Later in life, I return to this region of the world when I find a job in Russia. I describe my culture shock and experiences there. I describe how this mix of experiences and influences helped me realize the culture with which I identify. So this is a brief paragraph about what digital story will be about. So this is the summary of the whole digital story. Do you remember that in our first draft, we wrote this kind of a summary. So we first like, came up with the topic and then we developed the central idea. Then using the mind mapping software, we put the ideas that go together. And then we wrote a brief summary, um, a paragraph maybe, four or five sentences describing what is the main idea of this digital story. So this is basically it. You are going to watch a digital story about this. And then here, the author is clearly including the purpose of this digital story. The purpose of this digital story is to describe the transformation from feeling like an outsider to forming and accepting my own identity. So most of us have faced this dilemma, right? So also is trying to address this dilemma in her digital story. And here she is clearly putting the intended audience. Before we started writing the narrative, I told you that it's essential to keep in mind what kind of audience you are intended for, right? It can be young people, it can be students, it can be school children or aged people. So depending on your audience, your style will vary. Here, the target audience is ESL classroom and it's lesson on culture. So this is basically a teacher preparing a digital story about her personal experience for her students. Look at this. She's putting the images and here describing this image, she's writing a narration. So here goes the image and then goes the accompanying narration. So this image will run as long as the narration ends, then continues the next images. And the author writes here a very short narration, which means this Pictures will be moving quickly in our digital story. This is the third shot, another image, another narration. So you see, the author has made clear to herself which kind of design she's choosing. So this flag here will be fading and moving. So she will be choosing this kind of image. If you have all these details set in your storyboard, Later on, when working on your digital story, it will be very easy. So I really recommend you to work and to put as much detail as possible in your storyboard so that next step will be easier. So here is the audio accompany mentioned. Audio, no music. 
So when the author is narrating this part, she will not be including background music. Then continues other images. Here is another image and here another narration following this image. And about the design, the author says that image will start small and then zoom in or center so that the question marks grows larger. Again, no music for the audio. So including this kind of details in your digital storyboard will make it a clearly set process. So now you have everything necessary. You have everything in your hand. All you need to do is to move on to the next stage and to record it. Here in your digital story, you should already prepare and download your images and music. I will also share with you the websites where you can download and choose free of copyright images so that you will not have later problems with author's rights. So the digital storyboard continues. Here are, another, here are other pictures and narration. The design is pace quickens and images move faster and screen fade every time an image moves. Some more images are following and other phrases and etc. So this is the basic form of a storyboard. I hope that after this, you have a clear image about what storyboard is. I really like this kind of storyboards created with the help of Microsoft Word. First of all, it's accessible. I think every one of us know and have Microsoft Office Word in our PC. Second of all, it's easy to develop and you can organize it very easily. It does not require any kind of uh, digital, digital skills, more than basic skills. And also you can save it in your computer and anytime you can use it again, or you can distribute it to your students as a background from where to start. So whatever, whatever you choose, sometimes um, some authors really want to be spontaneous. They choose on the spot narration and they don't really include every detail in their storyboard. But I assure you that if you have a very detailed storyboard, later process will be easier. So till our next session, till the next week, we will be preparing a storyboard. It's better if you use Microsoft Word, but if you prepare pen and paper, it's also okay. Whatever you use, that's your choice. The most important thing is to have a clear image of what will be included in your digital story. So this is the basic ideas I wanted to share with you today. I will be sending you a links for copyright free images. And then I will be posting some questions for discussion in our Telegram group so that you will have, uh, you will give some reflection on each other's work and so that you will be you will be getting each other's opinion on which kind of devices to choose and etc. So our discussion will include what type of microphone or recording device did you use in your previous experience with digital stories or what kind of microphone do you have at home? What kind of problems arise when you tried to use microphone or a computer or a recording device and how did you solve them? and also about audio recording software. So it will be experience sharing. I will post these questions on our group and I hope all of you will give information based on your experience, which will be valuable to each other. Now, I really want to have, I want, really want to listen to your insight about your digital stories. So you have already prepared your narratives, please, Tell me, are you ready for the narration? Do you have any questions for this process and what, how you are going to develop this narration later? For example, uh, Zebona Sopa, you have a very good narrative. We all read it. We all really enjoyed reading it. It's very, um, let's say, it's very personal and it really comes from 
the deep inside of you we felt it's it's sincerity we really liked it now what kind of images are you going to choose for your story what kind of videos do you have in mind just tell us what you are going to do in your storyboard okay thank you very much first of all nargiza for the wonderful feedback and really i uh, i know that all sto story to story telling it should come from the heart from the story should be from the heart and i know that not everyone are ready to tell their personal things but i am open to it you know i i i i I am okay with it because I want to share with my experience uh, with other, my students, my girls uh, whom I have in my class. So, uh, and I am giving an, a good example to my students that they can also, everybody have a story to tell, but not everybody ready to tell it because of the not, they are not courageous or maybe they shy. But once you will do it, you will feel so relief, you know, you feel sure. so well. And it is my, uh, I have a, my first uh, story was about my aunt uh, whom we